Hello. Um, we start our new recording uh, on January 13, 2014, and I will give you a usual our usual 10-minute introduction because most of our viewers are new on YouTube, so so you need introduction. Um, we are speaking to aliens, to our friendly extraterrestrials through a channel, or Jim will channel today, we are starting a new channeling session, and uh, these are Pleiadians, Lyrans, um, uh, Yael Greys, uh, we speak a little bit to Arcturians, and all together form an alliance called Gorkfitnir, and recently a new species uh, joined their alliance, new race. Uh, we also speak to an angel, we spoke to a fairy, we spoke very briefly to a reptilian, um, we spoke to Andromedans, it was very important, we spoke to uh, human hybrids in space, um, and the most important was a conversation with uh, ancient god, group spirit called El. Uh, El. Uh, El told us that uh, he, they are planning a big crisis in which half of the humanity will perish, and they're planning it for. 2027, year 2027, 13 years from now. And that's the sad news, and we want to prevent that, that suffering, or at least minimize it. And obviously there are ways to reduce it by, by preparing to it. Basically the, the, the goal is not to kill people, the goal is to help us transform, to change our all our system, financial, political, governmental, all, the, all others. But, you know, that's, that's the gods, uh, the gods want that. Otherwise, our species will not survive. Um, what is our way of helping that? We speak to, to our alien friends and we wish them to give us knowledge, we wish to learn from them, we wish for humanity to open up to galactic community. And the easiest way for that is obviously for them to come down, but they are not ready, we are not ready. The humanity, if they come now, uh, come down now, the crisis will not happen in 2027, it will happen now. And the, human, uh, the humans will perish now. It's, uh, everybody knows that, that uh, our economy is very unstable, political system is very unstable. If the aliens show up now, what will happen? The humans will just realize that the aliens come here, they have technologies way stronger than ours. If they have technologies way stronger than ours, why do we need our military? We don't. And if we don't need our military, then um, we don't need to pay taxes and the whole balance system of selling oil, of paying to governments, of of you know a part of the globe producing things, other part of the globe, civilized world producing information and kind of exchanging. All of that delicate balance will be broken and will have the, the crisis. And the crisis would be pretty tough. Now, um, so the aliens are delaying that, that announcement because they know we are not ready, they will be scared. Uh, not, not personally, but the, the humanity will be scared and they need to prepare how to minimize the damage from that open contact. They need to come in invited. They, they, they want us to invite them. They want us to be prepared. So to help them we propose that they take us up there and create a human colony in their motherships, on their planets. And they took our, advi our advice and it, they, they took over volunteers, they invited volunteers. So far about 200 volunteers went up and down, visited them. And right now there are uh, over three colonies, four or five colonies up there to with total about 100 humans, volunteer humans, who are helping, uh, who are developing the open, who are developing the contact up there, it's not open contact. Obviously we tell about it openly, but nobody knows about that. The humanity is not aware of that. Um, so we are in communication with these people only through channeling messages, we didn't speak to them directly. But when uh, we created a site, humancolony.org, humancolony.org, visit that site and uh, on that site you can apply for a visit up there and when people apply, several of us, 
not me, but several of our people on the website have been visited very soon after applying, like next day or very soon after applying. So far, it's between five and eight people have been visited. Uh, they reported through the site that they have been visited and they had interviews. Uh, they take the aliens, take our friendly aliens from the alliance called Gorkfitnir, or Gorkfitnir. Uh, they take they take only about one percent of applicants, but it is already a, a nice beginning. So um, we have about two hundred applications. We have about two hundred members on our side. Join our side. Join the discussion, and let's together raise the awareness, raise the awakening. The humans have to understand the awaken to the truth, spiritual truth, and to uh, the higher dimensional truth. All the aliens we are speaking to are from the fourth dimension. We are third, they are fourth, they are, and they have to go, to show up here, they have to go down in one dimension. So they use trans-dimensional technologies. Um, that is about the history. Uh, we are already half a year into that journey. Before that, we knew about this from other channels, but now we channel. We have we, we have uh, our own channel, Jim, and uh, where he invites good entities, and they come through and speak to me, and I interview them and record them on a video. That's our mission. It's important for us to spread the knowledge. So please um, share that video to others. Um, we invite the nations. We need money just to, to keep going. For, for life. Um, we uh, would be happy to visit other groups. We located in Rochester, New York, upstate New York, New United States, near Toronto. So we can drive around to Ottawa, Philadelphia, uh, other places nearby, maybe New York City. So if you invite us, we would be happy to come. Uh, and if you can get the money for the tickets, say, if you assemble a group of people, of 30 people, for a two-day course seminar on healing and channeling and extraterrestrials, we'll be happy to come, give a seminar, so you need to pay our tickets. So for example, one ticket to, two-way ticket to Arizona is about $350, so, so if you assemble about seven, eight hundred dollars we can, we can go visit you. Uh, Jim gives the uh, individual channelers over video Skype, so you can sign up. He charges forty dollars per half an hour. Now, what we'll do now is I need healing. I have some 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 problems with um, infections in my in my gums, so I need that. So the uh, Jim will work on my uh, on my gums using Reiki, and while doing that, uh, somebody usually comes through. And I get uh, the, not only Jim's uh, healing energy, but extraterrestrials and and higher entities help help that healing. So I'm using that opportunity also to get healing. Also, you will see how extraterrestrials do Reiki. Reiki is a healing technique where you lay on hands on a person and send energy to heal. Jesus Christ did that. We don't know the exact technique how he did it, but we know one of his students put hands like this on the back back right here, you stand on the, behind the person, you put hands like that, and just invite the healing light in your heart, and then let it let it go whatever it needed. So there, there is not much more sophistication other than being pure, inviting the, the energy, and send, send it down. Um, so you will see the Reiki, so it will be very unusual for you, maybe. So you will see the healing session of Reiki energy healing session combined with channeling. And when I lay down and uh, somebody from above speaks, it looks very natural, especially if it is a higher entity like, like a god or, or an angel. But then if we reverse, I will put my hands on Jim, it would be very funny, like we have a god speaking in lay, lay down prone position and I will be, will be healing, healing. But, but you know, it's just a channel, Jim is just a channel. There is part of his consciousness, part of his mind participating in that. They use his words, and sometimes they use the whole clusters of his uh, beliefs and uh, and analogies and bigger thoughts than just words. So I recognize when spe Jim spe when they use something, evoke something from Jim. I recognize that. But part of that is clearly coming outside of me and Jim. It's something very new to both of, both of us. So 
I, I'm absolutely confident it is real. It is. We are not waking it up. With all that said, uh, I will stop and you will see Jim doing Reiki on me. And if there is anything personal, I will wave my hand and then later I will see my hand on the screen. I will cut it out so in YouTube you will see only pieces which are for public and nothing personal will come out there. And on the website you can ask questions for next seminars, for next offline sessions, and I will ask those questions. The energy patterns on your planet are disruptive. Mm -hmm. Why? Yes. Metaker, how are you? I am not to care. Oh, who are you? This is L. Oh, hey L, thank you for coming through. To care is busy. Um, how have you been? We are quite busy. What are you busy? This is not the only planet that needs help. Uh, what is percent of your effort uh, devoted to the Earth? It depends. Each day is planned out as needed. Today, about 17%. Oh, wow. 17% of the whole L's effort. For this day in your time. Yeah, I was assuming that you are much more busy in other parts of the galaxy. We are. Are you going to other galaxies? We are everywhere we need to be. Are you in other creations, universes? We are everywhere we need to be. It is too long of a an explanation to tell you where we go. And still, out of all that huge amount, 17% is devoted to Earth. Today. Yeah, I understand. Sometimes 0%. I understand. But 17% today. So my logic is that... Uh, because of that big disaster coming in 2027, it will be a huge problem. It is a disaster comparable to destruction of Atlantis. There will be a lot of suffering. And emotionally, there will be a lot of suffering released to the other dimensions. Because of that, it is very important for us to understand who you are, how did you make this decision. This is not the first time this decision has been made. It does send energy through the entire universe, positive and negative. We try to subvert that by letting you know far enough ahead of time to help diminish the effects of what needs to be done. Do you understand? Yes. Your Jesus, as you call him here. Yes will come and speak to you on how to help you with these problems. Yes, what's your relationship to Jesus? We are his children as well. Children? Is, did, did Jesus come out from outside of our creation? That is a hard question to answer because your creation is part of him. He is outside, within, and all part of your creation. So yes, he's come from outside, but he is also within. What is your relationship to Trinity? We are outside that relationship, but we are close at hand when things need to be done. We are outside the angelic realm, but yet we can flow between the heavenly spheres, the nine realms, the fourth and fifth and sixth and third dimensions. We, we care not to be in the seventh dimension as much. Mm -hmm. It has certain meanings to be there. Mm -hmm. So we do not mean the same thing as those who are there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Perfect sense, thank you, it explains a lot. So you don't go beyond seven up? Beyond seven is dangerous travel for us. Uh-huh. So you're not Father God? 
No, we are not Father God, but we are considered spiritual helpers. Uh-huh. So, the ancient El was often considered to be father of the gods. You are not that. The ancient El was connected to the father god. The modern El has moved away in some senses to be more effective. Does that make sense to you? So ancient El and you were the same thing, you just evolved from that? Correct. Uh, why were your, your symbol, why was it a bull? Why was our what? Bull, an animal, a symbol of El, with horns. We have many symbols, uh -huh. but the bull on your planet was a sign of strength uh -huh. and also in some cultures was a sign of majesty. We used the bull to show that we were part of something majestic and strong. Excellent. Thank you for explaining that. So it looks like you evolved from the ancient times. and. I assume that means that you somehow correlated to the time. You live in a time which is parallel to ours. Is that how it works? It is not only parallel, but it is linear and it is dimensional. So there are several ways we can describe our relationship in time, in space, in matter. Mm -hmm. So you also evolve, evolve with time, right? All things change. Change is one thing that you cannot survive without. How far can you go in time in our world? There are rules that govern your time, our time, and every time. Certain species can go slightly farther and slightly farther ahead than others because of knowledge of their intentions. Our intention allows us to go forward more than backward. So I know the grace can look maybe three days forward. I can easily access a few days forward in our time. How far can you look in our time forward? We can go farther than that. Depending on the situation, permission can be granted for up to a year. What's your internal structure? How are you structured inside? Internal structure is communal. Uh -huh. We are one and many, uh -huh. just like the Creator. However, we were created and not formed. Like angels. Correct. What's the difference between you and angels? We are outside the realm of angels, so that we can be more effective in time and space. What's your main function? We, our main function is to keep worlds from destroying themselves, in whatever fashion that we can find that will keep them alive and cause as minimal of damage as possible. Are you familiar with the movie Matrix? Yes. In the Matrix there are people in suits who are sub-programs keeping the world uh, intact. Would you be working on, would you be similar to these people in suits who keep the Matrix intact? There are some similarities, but there are other parts of us that are very dissimilar. What's the difference? The difference is we do not stay on your world to maintain it. Mm -hmm. We do not monitor it in such a way as to be present at all times. We do also not, per we do not logicize your programs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, we I accept them for what they are at this time mm -hmm. and we calculate their success or failure. Does uh, that make sense to you? Perfect sense, thank you. Uh, we are in a way, we are programs. My genome is 3 billion nucleotides, so my, the length of my basic program is 
3 billion units and also have experience and memories on top of that. Are you also digital? Do you have a program? We started with a program similar to yours in some ways, but at this time our program has disconnected from that of a DNA system. Oh, so you were physical at some time? Yes. What was your human form, um, physical 3D form? Very, very large. What was that? Any animal we know? It was humanoid. Oh, you were humanoid at some point? Basically. Were you mammals? Basically. Oh, so the fact that our ancient god was made in an image of a human could correlate to the fact that you were a human at some point. This is logical, but not continuously true. Oh, very good, thank you. Uh, so how big is your program now, and your basic program? You know the word Google, is it bigger than Google? Oh, much, yes. The Lyrans somehow, uh, so it looks like most of the civilizations in the galaxy are using mm -hmm. your services for keeping the economy. We are efficient. Yes, yeah, so the Lyrans somehow decided not to use you. Why was that? They used us at one time. How did they evolve to not use it anymore? They were logical in their use of our n wisdom and knowledge. Therefore, they advanced and we do check on them, but we do are not intermingled. But we do speak to them and they do follow direction when necessary. We do have to adjust their thought patterns now and then. Who is supervising you? We supervise ourselves. But God is our leader. Thank you. So you're speaking to me now. Are you speaking to any other humans in a similar ways? Not on earth. Oh, that's an honor to be speaking to you here now. So you mentioned... You are the only ones that knew who we were. Thank you. So uh, you mentioned that there were destructions on Earth before which you performed or you mediated. Mm. You were involved in. What were those? We did have influence on the Atlantean culture. Thank you. We did have influence on the discovery of other continents. Oh, wow. You mean Columbus or before that? Before that. Okay. What was your uh, involvement in the last couple hundred years in our history. We have not been directly involved in your last couple hundred years other than the advance in the industrial age. What was the way you influenced the industrial advance? That is classified. It's fine, thank you. Uh, so you the biggest recent big involvement of you was in Atlantis? Yes. How about in Egypt? It was later than Atlantis. Were there? Yes. We were not directly involved. That was a different species. So the god Ptah wasn't you? Was not us. Or the god Zeus wasn't you? Was not us. Ah. And in Sumeria? There was L in Sumeria, right? Yes. Was it you? It was a portion of us, yes. What did you do then? We helped the twelve tribes. In which way? Actually, 
it was meant for them to be divided. We have helped with their division. Twelve tribes, are these the tribes of Israel? Yes. In Sumeria? Yes. Interesting. So you held it, but you know, how physically you participated? Did you channel or you appeared? We only appeared once. And how did you look? As a fire. Was it fire described as the fire which Moses saw in the bush? Very similar. Was it when the Moses saw a fire in the bush, was it you? No. What was that then? That was God. The Creator. The Creator. Thank you. So, Elohim, are they connected to El in any way? Yes. What's the connection? We do not speak much about this, but they are a fraction of El. Like renegades? But not like renegades at all. Ah. But, yes, but similarly different. Because their views changed and they must have their own belief. Were they physical at that time? Yes. For the most part. Were they human looking? Yes. Taller than us? Yes. Like nine feet? Yes. Uh huh. Did they have a planet? No. Let's see. Were they technically advanced like extraterrestrials are, which we talked to? Like ships and stuff? No. No ships necessary. I see. The Ark of Covenant, was what was that? Was it the nuclear station? It was a technology beyond what you can possibly imagine. Beyond? Yes, and it was a storage unit for those things found precious and holy to the Most High. High? Most High meaning the God? Yes. Why would they keep it on Earth? <laughs> it, it was safer there. And the Israelites were keeping it and carrying it around? It is still on earth. I see. Was it Israelites who carried it around or it was uh, some, someone else? It was many who moved it. Israelites, yes. Bandits, yes. But they were destroyed when they opened it. I see. But because they were of not of the faith and did not believe in what was there. So Israelite priests did know something. Did they talk to you or to someone else? They talked to everyone who would listen. But did they get their knowledge from you or someone else? Someone else. Was it the Creator? It was someone sent from the Creator, yes. Can you divulge a name? There are many. Elijah, Elisha. Was it wasn't a human? They were hybrids. Uh huh. They did not leave this earth in the normal fashion, as you know. Ah. Both Elisha and Elijah were said to be assumed into heaven. Wonderful, thank you. But you weren't part of that story. No. Uh huh. Thank you. That that helps. Um. So. Jesus will help us to understand what to do with the with the crisis. Yes. Uh, my main question. No more questions. Thank you. I appreciate your visit. Thank you very much for your knowledge. We will return when the time is right. Thank you. But we have some work to do here. You are planet energy is disturbed. Yes. There's been much upheaval on this planet recently. 
much more than that has been reported. We feel that. Yes. Just recently, another earthquake. Yes. Many storms and the cold weather that you are experiencing last few weeks will return. I see. Unless something is done, it will be brutal. Brutal. So the best way... Okay, no questions. We'll pray. Yes, please. I must go now. Blessings. Thank you much. <laughs> I'm focusing now on this 2027 crisis. And it's sort of difficult on me, but I think it is important. I think it was one of the most important things I do at the moment. How much these two are connected, the crisis and the gingivitis? There is a kind of correlation there because stress does not ease the disease. It actually causes it to flourish because it is negative. But your concern is real and vital. I have no logical explanation for what was spoken. Uh, the throat chakra, is the gingivitis and throat chakra very connected? There is a small correlation. It's not because I restrict my speaking. It looks like I speak free, relatively freely. Correct. Do I overeat? Uh, only you can answer that. Let's see, I think so. It goes by individual. I see. But there are times when you possibly overeat. But only you would know for sure. I focus lately on my noise in the head, especially when I meditate. I hear yes. high pitch noise and recently there was a period of low pitch noise. Like, oh, like that. Let me explain. Each species who travels interdimensionally or even in the ships has their own frequency. Mm -hmm. When they get close to your surroundings, when they get close enough that your brain can pick them up, you will hear their different frequencies, their modulations. These are intentional and unintentional as well. Mm -hmm. Some want you to know that they are within your range and that they want to communicate with you. But more times than not, it is a frequency that is just in your area. So that high pitch noise I hear 50% of the time, most of the time. That is a species. Which one? It is a gray species. Ah. Oh. So this very, very high speech noise is gray? Zetas? Zetas. Ah, oh. would it be advisable to speak to them through the gym? The Zetas have not been defined their intentions. However, their actions would suggest that they are benign at this time. Mm -hmm. But this could be a mask. So you are not against speaking to them? I would allow it, but that is up to Fission. He is more okay. aware. Yeah, I thought about speaking to Zetas, especially if I hear them so much. So you think this is Zetas? What I hear? Yes. It's like 50% of the time, most of the time I hear that. And when I meditate, I hear it's very loud. It is who is around Jim a lot. Oh, they're also around Jim. Yeah, by the way, here is a question from Jim. What was his visitation uh, last night? Something that touched him and went through one side of his body. Like that was the Zetas. Ah. They are interested in the two of you separately and together. Wow. We are aware. Wow. 
We have allowed it. They have no done no harm. All right, then we need to speak to them right away. Then. <laughs> that is your invited to speak. We wish to know what you are up to. And we respect you very much. At first we had discouraged you speaking to them, but now it is apparent that they are benign and not harmful, or not being harmful. They have tendencies toward harm for certain other species, but at this time they've been good to Earth people. I see. They know they are being watched. I see. Light springs of joy freely fall, freely fall. Light springs of joy freely fall, freely fall. Healing ma. Joy is healing, healing health. Love and all. Can you see me? I see Jim. What about the eye? See Jim's eyes. Hello. Hello. Are you at the grave? No. Who are you? I am here. You're welcome. I see a new expression on Jim's face. I am ready. Hello. Hello. What species are you? Reptilian. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming through. I felt that. It felt reptilian. Um, would you introduce your speech or yourself? I tried to speak before. Oh, you are the one who's, who came through before. Mm, and you said that not all reptilians are bad. That is what I said. So you don't eat humans? I don't. What? The, your species doesn't eat humans. No, we do not. What do you eat then? We find human flesh repulsive. Okay. There are other things that we do to mm. nourish ourselves. Do you eat mammals? We do not eat the species of your planet. Uh huh. We do eat some vegetation of your planet. Ah. Uh -huh. But the meat that we eat is grown by our own people. Oh, so you have agriculture and you grow animals on your planet for food? Correct. Like cows or something? There nothing that you have seen. I see. How tall are you? What difference does it make? Ah. Oh. I don't know. It's uh, just easier to imagine how you look. Are you humanoid looking, looking like humans, two legs, two hands? I do not look like you. Do you crawl or what? I stand. Uh huh. Are you involved in human in, in Earth at all in the solar system? We are. Oh, you are three D three D reptilians, which are located in the solar system, like a thousand or so. Yes. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming through. So, what's your purpose on the solar system? At this time, we are observers in your plight to survive. I understand. Do you have a name for your species which we could use? No. 
Are you connected to Anunnaki? No. All right. Are you good fighters? When we have to be. You would have phasers and shoot around? <laughs> Child's play. <laughs> uh, we know, uh, what is that? Mm. In Star Trek there are some reptilians. Ugh. Are you familiar with Star Trek? Cardassians, yeah. Are you f like Cardassians? No. What's the difference? They're too pretty. Oh, you're not pretty? Not by your standards. Oh, okay, by our... Are you sexual? Do you have families? Not like your families. Our families are much larger. Oh, the clans. Yes. And your children are educated in the clan? Yes. Do you love your children? Yes. They come out of eggs? Eggs. Yes. Wow. Are they taught to be fighters or what percent of your life is fighting? This sector of time fighting is only three to five percent. What else do you do? We are scientists. Ah, I'm a scientist too. We are observers of change. Uh huh. We learn about things we cannot know otherwise other than visiting you. What part of your whole species activity is the Earth Project? What percentage would that be? I do not know. Is it be below 1%? I do not know. I would have to. I believe it's much higher than 1%. It's fine. So why can't you find a common language with Grokfitnir? Grokfitnir. We speak. You speak. So uh, in my website we have Edmund, whose hybrid child is in your possession. Is it right? No. Oh. Do you have any human captives? There are different reptilians that have him. That's why I ask for a name for your species. Because, you know, we have reptilians and reptilians, and there is no way to separate you and them. How about you come up with uh, some def definitive name or identifier? Reptilian 1, reptilian 2, something like that. We will be would the friendly reptilians be acceptable? Yes. Thank you. Friendly reptilians. Excellent. Thank you very much. Are you doing any positive work except studying? Positive meaning helping the earth physically. We are not permitted to actually interact at this time. Permitted by your government? By anyone. I see. We have a dubious past. I see. However, we are moving forward in positive ways. Uh, one of the hypotheses was that the reptilians delay our development because they want to race to four dimension with us and they cannot do it fast so they tie us and them spiritually and kind of go behind us trying to race to four dimension how about that theory um, it sounds silly to me thank you my thoughts are we learn from you what we can and move into the light as quickly as we can. 
becoming attached to you would only bring us down. Thank you very much. It helps a lot to understand your path. What's your god? The same as all gods. Uh, are you connected to Jesus? That name is earthly. Of course. We don't have any other name for him. I see. Yes. We have... a similar entity. So Jesus is one of our main prophets and gods. Yes. Would it be the same energy, one of your main prophets and gods? Our energies are entangled differently. What makes you proud? What makes your race proud? That we can still exist. That is sad. It's not the only thing that makes us proud. We are proud of accomplishments in science. Good. And that is one reason we still exist. What kind of science do you do? Many kinds. So you're very advanced. You're still 3D, but very advanced in science. You fly More space. More advanced than you. We are able to come visit you. You cannot come visit us. Yes, I, I'm surprised reptilians can be... So you are from... Can you say which star you're coming from? Yes. What is that? Taurus. Taurus is constellation, right? Yes. Which one of the Tauruses? I do not know the name of it. I just know the constellation. Thank you. I know our name. Are you connected with human reptilian hybrids? Yes. Tell me more about them. I'm very interested in hybrids. They want me to leave. Thank you very much for your visit. Come again. It was very interesting to meet your race. Hello. I am the Angel Gahil of the Nine Realms. Hey, bidding Gahil. you greetings. Greetings, Gahil. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. The word is that the Lord is coming. He will come to you and tell you things that will help you. As a species, as a race, as individuals. He has told me to come before him and make an announcement. Thank you. He will not let you down. He gives you many blessings ahead of time and will come. And when he comes, the disruptions on the earth will be still for those moments that he is here. He brings you blessings. Thank you. should not have told you who we were. Why not? We weren't finished with our observation anonymously. I guess you weren't in good communication with them, that's why. Yes. Welcome, thank you for coming through. 
it was at a point where we had no choice. I know, you always, very often the, the, the grades are moving forward out of having no choice. Yes. It is annoying. I know. I, I'm very much connected to Zeta Grace. I studied you as much as I could, and I was felt interested in you and connected to you. We are interested in you as well, and connected as well. We just wish to have some form of control over our own actions, and sometimes we do not, which is very annoying. I know. I'm sorry for that. We are not sorry for many things, but we are sorry for that as well. Um, are you talking uh, for yourself or for the whole race? For myself. Can you introduce yourself? Zenda. Zenda? Zenda. Z-E-N-D-A? Close enough. Thank you very much. Welcome, Zenda. Are you male or female? I am male. Mm, are you assigned to Earth Project? Yes. I'm assigned to you. Oh, excellent. Welcome. And to Jim. Excellent. Welcome. And to one other. Hmm. I don't know any other, anyone else. That is okay. We have not been exposed to the other. It's fine. So, can you explain anything? Not at this time. We are forced to come and tell you that we are here. I see. But we are not forced to tell you what we are doing. I see. But we will, in time, let you in on some of the details, as you would say. I guess we can talk about a few, few minutes about general questions. And obviously we need to establish your benevolence. Uh, and the best way of doing that is to talk about your relationship to God. Yes. What's your God? What is our God? Yes. Our God is the one and many. Yes. Is Jesus one of your prophets and God's energies? We do not have a Jesus. Are you familiar with our Jesus? Yes. So this energy is not playing in your civilization at all? There is this energy, but it did not come in the same way. So the energy is present. It came in the way of other beings from different worlds. I see. Are you connected to L? We are connected. Is it helping your race to survive? They have helped our race survive. But not anymore? They help our race periodically survive. I see. Uh, are you our ancestors? We have ancestors that are related to you. Oh, we come from common ancestor. Yes. Would it be is it a gray common ancestor or would it be other? Other. Thank you. How much of you are individual thinking and how much of your high mind? That is a question for those that are able to answer it. Mm. Say, compared to this do race, Yael. Yes. You are much more high, right? Yes. Are females in your race only like mother bees or are they doing the work in as well? They have moved into many spots in our civilization. Uh-huh. But they prefer to be secondary. Secondary? What does it mean? They prefer, to, but they prefer to be helpers. Helpers. So they're not the ones in control. Correct. I thought, we thought that 
females are in control, that you are much more hot, mm, have much more hot tall society. Mm. Matriarchal. Matriarchal. This is true in some senses. Uh -huh. So you don't have a planet anymore or you have some planets? We have scattered planets. But no home planet or? Home home planet is gone. What was the name of it? The home planet that is gone was Sandora. Sandora? What star was it? The star closest to the dog star. Dog star. Sirius. Correct. Which is triple star. Yes. So the star is still there, but the planet is gone. Correct. Can you give a time frame? When was it gone? In your years or in our years? Ours, of course, ours. 297 years. 297 only? Yes. All right, then in your time, what, how long would it be? 317. So it's very recent. I thought the Greys were involved in our ancient history. Yes. In Atlantis time, right? But there were many planets. We have many planets. So then I'm complete, completely confused. I thought that this history of grace is that you were humans, humanoids, and then you destroyed your planet and evolved into Zetas. And I thought it was many millennia ago. Where am I wrong? That is a different species of grace. Ah, okay. You were thinking of the Clares. Clares. I see. So... They live under your ocean, Pacific. Oh, these are the clears. Hmm. They have always had connection to your planet. Ah. And they still do. So they are the greys? They are grey. Tall? Species, yes. Are they connected to our military? They are. Are they welcome on them? Not as such. They walk above the, among the high-ranking military. The clear, still walking around among higher-ranking military. And these are the ones which destroyed the planet a long time ago and then evolved from humans into greys? Yes. So these are the ancient ones? Yes. Now you're Zetas. Zetas are supposed to be from Zeta Reticuli, and now you say you're from Sirius. So what's the, where is the, the cause of that mismatch? That's where most of the population is. On Zeta Reticuli? Yes. All right. So you destroyed your, another planet? Yes. Who was destroying it? It was a war many centuries ago started but finished 299 years ago. All right, here is another misconception. Seven, we thought... 97 years ago. Thank you. We thought that greys evolved in a very peaceful species and don't fight anymore. And now it appears that you destroyed the planet. They, we did not destroy it. Oh, who did? Our nemesis destroyed it. Nemesis? What is nemesis? Enemy. Oh, enemy. Oh, so this. So you're not. You weren't fighting, right? Or oh, are you warriors? We try not to be. Ah, oh, but you can. How would you? Sometimes fight? everyone must fight. I see. For what? Thank you. They so hold dear. I understand. Thank you. I feel compassion. Uh, tell me. Um, you are a high mind of <coughs> Zeta Grays. So you're connected to Zeta Grays and Zeta Reticular? Yes. Mind-wise? Yes. So whatever you hear now, they can access if they wish to? They can access if they wish to. How long does the signal go? Is it like instantaneous? It only takes fractions of seconds. And in which dimension it goes through? Third, fourth, and fifth. In the third dimension, it cannot go that fast. Can it? Yes. It can? 
Yes. Hmm. Okay. There are things that are unfathomable to humans that are possible. Uh, I'm feeling we're running out of time because you cannot stay here for a long time. So I wish to s jump to the next introduction section, which is prayers and poems. Do you write poetry? I do not. Do you know some poetry of your species? Poetry. I know of it, yes. Do you use prayers to speak to God? Yes. Could you choose a prayer which you could share with humans? My favorite is The light falls, the shadows break, the light falls, the hate does not resume. Patterns of light, patterns of thought, patterns everywhere that were created by the gods for us to find and learn, build our wisdom, and become part of. We are now falling on others to light up their worlds, but yet, without the light behind us, there is only darkness. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I know the greys are focused on darkness because they have so much darkness behind. And you're moving forward, right? You're moving dimension up. Darkness is to be feared. It is new to me. Others would say to be fighted or fought or to be embraced. And you said feared. Fear is illogical, but fear is tangible. Yes. Do you use law of attraction? Das doch Yes. So in law of attraction, we try to avoid darkness and focus on positive. Do you do the same? Yes. I see. Uh, would you like to read another prayer or poetry? Would you like to hear another poetry? Yeah, I think it is so revealing about the race and establishes very high level connections because we have so little time the poetry condenses a lot of what you are, a lot of your vibration, and something we can hear and understand. Mm. Dark sky, light sky, dark sky, light sky, growing plants, dying plants, growing plants, dying plants, animals live and fall, Animals fall, then live, run, down, down, run, up, down. There are middles to everything, middles to nothing, riddles and middles, like you are. Tun, fall, fall up, in the clouds, reach out. Darkness fade, darkness shine, shine light, light shine. Thank you. It sounds like a human could write that. And I know that kind of poetry. It's not my favorite one, but it's very revealing of your culture. Do you have love poetry? Love. Yeah. Yes. Can you read some of that? No. <laughs> Do you love your children? Yes. Are they born in vitro? Yes. Uh huh. Do they grow up with parents? Yes. That is unusual. Yes. Is it part? Not of all grow up with parents, but yes, they do some. Did you grow up with your parents? 
Yes. Did you love your parents? My father. Yes. How about mother? Difficult. Relationship? Yes. Tell me more about that. That is very revealing about you and your culture. How could it be, in hive mind, how could it be a difficult relationship? She wanted different things for me than I wanted for myself. Oh, so you have a lot of individuality. That revealed a lot. Yes. What was specifically, what did she want? She wanted me to become security. Uh -huh. Security are very high regarded. Mm -hmm. I did not want that. Yeah, my cousin wanted to work for KGB and I tried to convince her not to because I thought that it is not a good way of doing that. It's not very honest. Was it the same concern of you or your security is very honest? It was different. Mm -hmm. I wanted what is known as more scientific. Uh -huh. She wanted what was more protective, security. Was it for personal uh, safety, personal um, and gain advancement, gain? Reputation. Reputation? We, we have reputation. So you measure your success by reputation? Some do. And you chose the science because it was interesting? Some do, yes. I did. And also, are you connected to your higher self? Can you speak to your higher self? Only at certain times of the year, when certain constellations are visible. Wait a second, you travel in the space. Yes. It doesn't matter. The time of the year doesn't matter in space. It does. It's visible from certain angles. Look, the year is connected to the spinning of the planet around the, the, its sun. You would not understand. Okay. Suppose so. Suppose it is astrology which is disconnected from your planet, right? Um, it is the angle at which you are being connected. Yes, I understand that. To which star? It depends on what we are connected with. Can you reveal the star you're connected with? That is personal. It's fine. Uh, so, would it be the reason you chose science because it allowed your higher self better growth, spiritual growth? No. Do you have children? No. Do you wish to? There will be a time. Are you young? I am fairly young. How old are you in earth years? 79. Ah, oh, you're very young. So your species lives about a thousand years? Not quite. Not quite. So if I were to meet you, would we be able to hug? Yes. Do you hug in general? Not in general. Not in general. So if I hug you, there would be no skin reaction, you wouldn't be afraid of my bacteria and other microorganisms? I do not believe so. Uh, if I were to... Can I ask for a visit to your ship? You can ask. <laughs> Thank you, I'm asking. Would it be safe for me to visit? With certain precautions. I'm very interested. I'm very interested. Would you, you... We are examining you for some of these reasons as well. Thank you. You have not had the same kind of attention that others have. Yours is much more specific. Maybe. So, uh, what would be the reason for me to visit? Uh, what would be benefit for you? That is 
confidential. Right, that's right. I would think uh, I would, could try to help you to understand humans better. How well do you understand humans? Not as well as we should. So, I think that would be the main reasons. If you are working on Earth project, you better understand humans better. So. So, uh, we are done for today. Thank you for watching. Um, we invite you donations. They keep us going. Uh, so far, we received $200, and Jim took 100 I took 100 and then we use it for life. If you, uh, so, go to humancolony.org. There is a donation button. You can donate through PayPal, and you can accept any other ways, like by check or credit card. Um, Invite Jim to speak to you, to give you personal channel and sessions through uh, video Skype or telephone. He charges half a, for half an hour $40. And we are <coughs> accepting invitations for public speaking, to fly or to drive somewhere from Rochester, New York. Um, visit our videos on our site. You can find them on YouTube just by, by typing in Hue Color, Human Colony abbreviated to Hue Color. Color, and you will find all our videos just through this easy search. And in humancolony.org you can apply to visit the stars, you can submit your applications and they, our alien friends would, would review the, those applications and pick the ones who they like to, to visit their ships and you can really meet them. And the open contact is coming and we are making everything possible to have it a positive effect on Earth. I think the aliens, my, our goal is for the aliens to become as popular as Beatles. And <laughs> for 2027 to be one of the happiest years of transformation without much suffering. Have a good day. Live long and prosper.